Morning folks, welcome back to the allotments and UK here we grow. Well, I was up very early this morning, uh, had a little job that I had to do, which I never looked forward to doing, but we've got a massive big old compost bin down the end of the garden. And uh, one of the jobs I have to do sort of every six months or so is empty it out because uh, <laughs> it was rammed this morning. I couldn't get another potato peeling in it if I tried. But uh, so I've emptied it all out. Um, and what I'm going to do with that, it's a little bit early really, I wasn't quite ready for it because my plan for the compost bin um, is to use all of that in the big polytunnel. And I don't know if you guys recall uh, when I changed the, the layout in it, the soil on where the paths used to be in there, very, very poor. So I'm hoping that this uh, <coughs> really nice compost that I've uh, made um, is going to help me condition that soil a little bit better. But uh, here you go, I'll spin around, you can have a little look. So trusty old trailer this morning and this is the stuff so I've got about half a trailer load in there and uh, I need to get it shifted over to the uh, over to the site and all I'm going to do with it is just put it in a uh, an empty bin that I've got and then uh, when I'm ready for it I shall dig it all out dig it all into the beds uh, the mulch that I've had in there as well um, that's all going to get dug in and then it will all be ready for planting and once I've planted it I shall then mulch it Got a couple of other jobs I want to do today as well, like you guys, I'm sure. You know, it's March, it's coming to the end of March, so it is the sowing month. Um, I'm going to do some sweet corn, and I'll show you how I do that uh, in a bit. Anyway, I'm going to get this shifted, cup of tea, and I'll be back. See you in a bit. Okay, guys, well, that's, uh, that's that little job done and out the way. Right, I'm going to whiz over here and tell you about a plan. Now, all my beds now, apart from one, are dug and finished and prepared ready for the for the season so i'm going to spin the camera around all right now hopefully you guys can see all of this here um this bed is where i had my potatoes last year and i did these in the ground um now what my plan is for this is i'm going to tr my take on the three sisters uh so i'm going to be planting my sweet corn here i'm going to be planting winter squash and I'm going to be also using uh, some yin yang beans, um, which you might remember some of you from ages ago when we've done a little competition for those. Uh, so I'm going to pull the camera down so you can get a better look and I'll explain what I'm going to do. It's a bit of a mess at the moment. Here's the old compost bin that I've uh, just filled up with uh, all the stuff from home. So basically right here on the front edge, uh, in fact, if I come around here, that'd be easier for you to see. Right. So what I'm going to do is through here, where sort of like the edge of this plastic is, I'm going to dig a quite a deep trench there, and I'm going to pile up and over onto the front edge, so I get quite a big high mound uh, along the front there. Um, there's two reasons for that. That mound is where I'm going to plant all of the squash plants. And the reason I'm planting them in a mound is because um, any of your cucubits, so uh, squashes, melon, cucumber, pumpkin, all of that sort of family, um, the roots or the stem where it goes into the ground, they don't like being wet, okay, and what you can get is sort of stem rot, and basically the plant will just rot away before it keep, you know, before it reaches the other end and matures, the other end where it's in the ground rots away. So by banking it up like that, that's going to allow me to have good drainage. Now to water it, I shall fill the trench with water. So every two or three days or so I'll come up with a few buckets of water and I'll fill the trench and then by capillary action the mound will suck up all of that water and, and keep the plants nicely moist uh, as I need them to be. So moving up a little bit further then from where the trench is going to be back to about sort of here uh, that is going to be all sweet corn in there um, and then each side of each sweet corn plant that I do I shall put two of the little um, uh, the yin yang beans each side of that and they will grow up each of the sweet corn plants so they'll they'll act like a, a natural uh, frame for the beans to climb up the squash now that's got a, a secondary purpose because what i'm going to do with that is from the front of the trench all the way up to the edge up to the, the shed here i'm going to string some string uh, and i'll probably have about seven or eight strings across there um, and the squash, uh, the winter squash 
will follow that string. It will grab hold of it and it will grow all the way through the sweet corn. Now the good thing about that is that um, the sweet corn will be, well, the ground around the sweet corn and the beans uh, will be sort of like naturally mulched with a living plant, i.e. the squash. The big broad leaves will prevent the sunlight getting right down to the ground. It should suppress the weeds naturally for me. And that means that I won't have to get in there and start weeding it. So from this one bed, I should have uh, three crops, sweet corn, winter squashes, and some of the pea beans. So on that note, let's go and have a little look at uh, planting up sweet corn. Okay, then let's get these sewn up so we're gonna do some sweet corn. Now I'm using the, uh, the deep cell Hanix root trainers. Um, you can get these uh, from Oakland Gardens, which is where we got them from. And for all of the UK Here We Grow members, community, they're still doing a discount on these. Uh, we'll, we'll put that in the, the uh, description below, but it's uh, UK HWG7. So when you get to check out, put that code in, you'll get 7% off. Um, now, if you haven't got these, all right, don't worry because you can uh, use the, the old tried and tested method of basically putting uh, toilet rolls, fill those up into them, which is quite nice actually. These, these uh, little trays work quite well for holding them all up right, and you can sew them that way. The key thing with sweet corn is they don't like the roots being disturbed. So whatever you sew them up in, however you deal with them, you don't really want to be you know, trying to pop them out of these cells afterwards because it will disturb the roots and they don't like it. So I'm going to use these. Um, the brilliant thing about these is obviously you've seen these before. You can open them up, gently prise them apart and you can pop your plug plant straight out of there, transplant it into the final growing position and the plants won't even know they've been moved. So, you know, I'm a real big fan of these things. I think they're absolutely excellent. Right, so I'm gonna get the compost. And all I've done is this standard compost with about 20% um, worm casts in it, because these sweet corn, they're gonna be in these for probably the next six to seven weeks, I suppose. Where are we now? We're about the third week of March and um, I won't be putting these out until May at least. So I just want to get these about the right depth and what I'm looking for is about a centimetre below. Now, when I've done this last year I had almost, I think it was only one that didn't germinate out of 60 plants. So in my book, that's almost 100%. I was well chuffed with that. Right, okay, and I've got a little convenient bit of wood that's about the right size. Just firms these down. Don't want to be too firm, just enough so I can pop a seed in each one. Beautiful day up here today, all the birds singing. You know, definitely know spring has uh, sprung when all the, the birds are out and thinking about getting busy building nests, etc. Right, lovely. Just clean them off. I should really do that at the end, but never mind. Right. Uh, first one then I'm going to do is uh, a variety called Swift. It's, uh, unfortunately, I think most sweet corn, they come as an F1. Uh, I'm yet to find one that isn't F1. So if any of you know of a good variety that's not F1 that I can save seed from, uh, I'll be quite keen to see that or hear from you. Um, please put it in the comments below. Um, all right, let's get into here. We've got a few seeds in there. There's 32 cells in one of these, and all I'm going to do is just basically put on just the sweet corn straight in, like so. I'm not going to be too fussy with it, just put them in. That one's no good. 
Check that they are whole corns as well, not damaged. You don't want damaged ones like that. That's split in half. That's no good. Discard it. Thought I had two there. I do love a bit of sweet corn. I'm really hoping that this uh, three sisters method, I've never done it before, so I'm really hoping it's going to uh, do it justice because sweet corn is a very, very hungry plant. They need a lot of goodness and they need a, quite a bit of nitrogen as well. And the beans growing around those will hopefully extract that nitrogen out of the air, fix it down into the ground via their roots, and that in turn will feed my sweet corn. Okay. So I'm going to keep them ones back. I've got three seeds left over. If I get a misfire on any of these, then I'll just put a new seed in and let it go. Uh, it'll just be a, a couple of weeks behind the rest. Um, I'm expecting to see these germinate in about four to five days. They need to be kept at around about 18 to 20 degrees Celsius. So room temperature. Um, if you've got a sunny windowsill somewhere at home, brilliant. That's what you want. Um, you know, they're, they're too too tender really to be putting over here in March in the, either of the polytunnels. Uh, the evening temperatures are just way too cold for them. So they need to be now kept indoors until they're ready to go out. And that'll be when the weather really does warm up quite significantly. So um, probably about first or second week of May over here in the UK. Um, ideally you want temperatures exactly the same as at home so around about sort of 15 between 15 and 20 degrees for when they're planted out right just give that a little shake just to level off a little gentle firm down like so now using these root trainers um, as we've sort of spoke about before it'll encourage the root system to grow very, very compactly. And it'll also force all the roots downwards. Now I'm a great believer in, if you're growing a plant that's tall, it needs a very good root structure to anchor it into the ground. And that's what these do. They encourage that um, condensed, uh, well-structured root system that when you do put it in the ground, it's all automatically heading downwards and, and the plant will continue to grow down and then it will grow out. And it really does anchor the um, sweet corn into the ground. I mean, I had virtually minimal supports for mine last year. I had fantastic uh, growth rate and the stems were really quite thick. Okay, they're in. Uh, I'm gonna give them a bit of a watering in. You can find, I don't know where you're going to get them from, but if you can find these on the internet, these little spray bottles, they're brilliant. They just fit on any sort of, uh, any sort of bottle really, bottle top, standard bottle top. And they just allow you to have like quite nice controlled watering. We're going to need a fair bit of water because it's obviously going to go all the way down to the bottom. Now when these shoot, okay, I shall remove the propagating lid. Uh, these kits come with a frame, the books, and one of these lids, and they just sit on the top like that. As soon as they get to about a centimetre tall, you'll just see the little spears popping through. All right, you take the lid off, and then you put the whole lot into the lid, like so, and then you can basically just pop it back and water from the side, and it will suck up, the compost will come up through, uh, the water will come up through the compost, and it will feed from the bottom, uh, and water from the bottom. Absolutely great, self-contained, love these things. Right, that's that one done. Um, now, obviously, with three sisters, I'm gonna be needing something else to go with them. And what I wanna do, I'll just get these out of the way. I'm gonna do, this year, these yin and yang beans. So let's just get this filled up quickly. Now, 
if you don't know about yin and yang beans, they used to be one of the British staples back in, I think, medieval times. So they've been around a long time, but they have fallen out of favour for some reason. People don't seem to grow them anymore. Um, I would suspect it's probably because they're quite fiddly to get out of the pods. Um, you have to wait until the pods are virtually dried out so they turn yellow. Look at that, look, typical. Let's get a bit. There we go. Right, same again. Just gonna, actually, no, I'm not going to use that this time, I'm just going to use my finger. Now these are what I saved from my own harvest last year. Beautiful looking bean, aren't they? They really are. So one per station, just pop it in. Don't worry about how it falls, it'll find its own way. Again, check each one, make sure there's no damage. That one's got a little hole in the side, so that one's going. I'm not having that. And these are great if you uh go great if you want to make a, like a chili con carne or something like that you can put these in they dry really easy they store brilliantly don't ask me what the latin name is because i can't remember but they have got a latin name to them i'll try and uh, dig it out and Actually, it's on the website, believe it or not. Um, yeah, if you go on the website, visit the gallery, you'll see these little beans on there and the, the name's on there. Talking of the website, um, if you're just new to the channel, we know we've had quite a few of you join us. Uh, welcome. And please do go and visit us on the website, which is www.ukheerwegrow.com. Uh, on there, you'll see the newsletter. And if you sign up for the newsletter, you'll get the inside sort of knowledge on everything we're up to, uh, all sorts of stuff, competitions, etc. Um, that sort of thing. It's free. You can unsubscribe at any time, so why not? Right. Just firm those down. Again, these, with these, these can be started off, all right? And as long as they're sort of protected, which they will be underneath the little uh, plastic propagating lid, as soon as they've pretty much germinated and established themselves, you can bring them straight over and put them into your unheated greenhouse or polytunnel, wherever. They're, they're, they're a little bit more hardier than the, um, the sweet corn. Right, let's clean that off. Get my water in. Done. Pea beans, sewn up. I need to make a label for them, but I'll do that later. Anyway, folks, see you in the next one. Thanks for liking, subscribing, commenting below. Uh, happy gardening.